up, I've always gone to church and listened to gospel music. And I think for me, gospel is just a great form of expression. And um, it's very uplifting and powerful to me. It's like a different, a different way for me to communicate with God in a way that I feel he connects and understands with me. Um, gospel music has honestly drawn me closer to God. Um, when I felt like I couldn't read my Bible, gospel music was kind of a substitution um, in order for me to just feel like God is still there even when I don't read about him in a book. To me, gospel music is a continuous celebration of God's spirit. Um, like Charity was saying, I've always grown up listening to gospel music. Um, it's the first thing my mom played in the morning and the last thing we heard at night. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was, it's just like she said, a way to connect with God and music is a universal language and there's so many different categories to music and gospel is just unparalleled and in the things that you sing about and you can dance to it. It's just so animated. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Growing up, I mean, gospel music has meant so much. Um, I grew up in the church. I was always singing in the church. Um, similar to a lot of gospel growing kids, you know, you wake up with gospel, you go to sleep with gospel. Um, my dad was a deacon um, and my mother worked in the church extensively. So I had a very big influence and connection to gospel music. Um, and it meant a lot, uh, I think differently than it does now, but in, growing up, it was a very important part as far as understanding what it means to be a Christian. Um, because I think music is a language in itself. And through the language of gospel music, I was able to understand what does it mean to be a Christian for Vernon? And what does that look like? So gospel music to me growing up is probably the most intricate part of my life. Um, I have a very interesting background when it comes to gospel music, just because I was a military brat. So I was not just exposed to Southern traditional gospel music. I grew up majority of my childhood in Germany. And so being exposed to music over there was definitely different than music here in America because you have so many different cultures that come over there. So we learned a lot of traditional gospel music. I mean, we're talking about like Milton Brunson and like James Cleveland, and James, you know, so these older gospel artists, um, but it was also the, I guess the pivot of gospel going from traditional to more so of their contemporary movement early 90s, you know, Kirk Franklin came out, you have Fred Hammond, you have Hezekiah Walker. And so it has been embedded in my DNA from the day I was born. Like I tell people all the time, I was born in the church. You know, my parents were very involved. My dad was a deacon all of my life that I can remember. And so just being in church every single Sunday morning, you know, going to church, I can remember going to church with my grandparents growing up, you know, the choir was always the thing that I was, I went for. They didn't really care what else was going on, but the music was happening, I was there. Anything else? I was out the doors. <laughs> Honestly, I think gospel music should be incorporated in all factors only because gospel music shouldn't be limited just to one thing or to African Americans. I think it's something that, like I said earlier, should be celebrated. Um, I think gospel music, <laughs> gospel music is so different from other music because its very existence is based on a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a purpose that other genres of music don't really have, and that is to understand who Christ is and to form that relationship that we're talking about. So there can also be people who don't necessarily have any type of relationship or may not have a relationship that's similar to the next person because we're all in different walks, um, in different stages of our walk with God. And I think that gospel music is beautiful because it still has that invitation aspect to it where you can come in it with as much experience or little experience as you have. Um, and still be able to gain something. And so do I believe gospel music should be sung everywhere? No, I think there's a place for it. And especially in the black church, it's the black church and the black community that is home for us. You know, that is where we thrive. That's what we grew up on. That is the evolution of our story here in America. Perception of the music is not necessarily 
what you would get if you were in a black church or you would have a predominantly black choir singing that was not classically trained. Whereas when you're singing spirituals that are, like I said, written, like for instance, anything by Moses Hogan, you know, any of those spirituals typically for his chorale had a little more, um, what would I call it? Um, soul to it, whereas some other choirs, just because of the nature of the singer and not really understanding the, the proper way to sing gospel music, it comes off in a very bel canto classical style, which is perfectly fine for that setting, but it just really depends on what setting you're in. You know, I'm not going to go to a Presbyterian church and sing, you know, a gospel song because they're probably not going to respond the same way if I was in a Black Baptist church. <laughs> The vocal performance traditions within gospel music require singers to belt with a high and low range. They also need to be able to improv, both the singers and instrumentalists. This draws specifically from the traditions of ragtime and jazz. Gospel music and a lot of pop music, um, it is a, you have to utilize the belting vocal technique to sing that style. And so it's a completely different mechanism. So if you're not used to it, um, a lot of classical vocal performance um, coaches and stuff like that will steer you away from gospel music just because they don't understand the craft of, of the belting vocal style. And rightfully so, it can damage your vocal cords if it's not done properly. Gospel music has derived from many genres. Spirituals are the main source for many gospel songs. Spirituals come from a time of brutal sickness in America. Through a pain that is unimaginable, many beautiful and gut-wrenching songs were born. Spirituals are key, and it's important to sing those because a lot of gospel music, it stems from these, like the spiritual repertoire, right? And so it's always good to go back to your roots and to understand why you do what you do, why you sing what you sing, why the lyrics are the way that they are, um, to understand the struggles that kind of inspired the song and the genre that we're singing now. So I think that singing spirituals in conjunction with the New Age Gospel has given, gives all of us on Gospel Choir a really good perspective about what it means to be a gospel singer. I feel like spirituals, they do belong to African Americans. That's just how I feel. But I don't think they're limited to be only sung by African Americans. So I feel like if, you know, somebody of a different race, they want to sing a spiritual in, you know, their own high school or college choir, that's fine, but know why you're singing it and the message that it was and why the song was written. And I know, um, like you were saying, these spirituals, they, they were for slaves. So I think if you're not necessarily African-American, that when you're singing these songs, they should be taking, taken seriously and um, they should be dealt with respect. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I say that because of the impact that gospel has on African-Americans as we sing it. Mm -hmm. um, singing gospel music is it's a lot of fun, first of all. Um, but outside of that, it's a very, um, very organic experience while you're singing it. And I think like someone was mentioning earlier about the freedom that kind of comes with gospel music. There is no way to know where a gospel song is going to take that performance because it, can, it literally just has such an intimate connection to everyone singing it that it can go in any direction. And I think as an audience, you know, to come and witness a choir performing gospel music, it's gonna be very different from seeing a classical or operatic performance um, where you can just sit and say, wow, they sound beautiful and amazing, very good intonation, all those things. Like it's very different because watching a gospel choir perform, yeah, they're gonna sound good. They're gonna have the moments where they belt and the moments where they're really soft and mellow. Um, but a lot of gospel music is about telling a story and painting a picture in the moment. And I think that it's really important for audiences to understand where gospel music comes from so that they can better, one, enjoy the performance that they're watching, um, but also, I guess, empathize with why it's such an important part of our culture. Absolutely. I think just in, even if you're being exposed for the first time when you leave that concert, I think you should do your due diligence and not just allow that one performance to dictate your overview of what gospel music is and really go back and do your research and understand the art form, understand where it came from. I mean, just like in any other academic setting or any other performance setting, typically people who go to, to the, enjoy those performances 
are well versed in the area or have some kind of knowledge of the performance area that they're that they're viewing good question um i don't necessarily think that they are to educate themselves before um entering like a concert or anything like that the reason why i say that is because it's our job as singers and believers to allow that person that's never heard of God to experience them for the first time, even if they've never picked up the Bible, they've never prayed for the first time. Our singing could be the gateway to them knowing who God is for the first time, you know? So I can't expect somebody who's never heard of God to just come in there and know every scripture front and back. Um, me as a worship leader, it's my job to make sure that I usher in the Holy Spirit so that that person could be touched and so that they can get a closer connection with the Father. I do think the people who like make music kind of have the the role of making sure that whatever they're making or like giving to people is relatable. Yeah. Like you can't, you have to be able to like talk to your audience yeah. in a way that they understand. And like young people aren't always going to understand what the older people understood. So mm -hmm. they just have to be able to, you know, relate with us. Exactly. So. Cause you can sing weight in the water, Yeah. but how can you make it cater to a 21 year old, right, right, not right. a 50 year old. So I think it's how you present it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I honestly love all of it. So going from hymns to nineties music to early two thousands to now, um, I just love all of it because one thing that they all share together is giving God all the glory. Um, of course, when you go back to the 90s times, they had their different style of gospel. You go to the early 2000s, they had their style. Now you have um, all kinds of artists like Ty Chiller, Fred Hammond. You have all these guys out here who have even been a part of the 90s music and they've upgraded themselves to, you know, nowadays. Um, it definitely has been a rapid transition. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm only a little bit over 30. And in my in, in my short time being here, I mean, since the early 90s to now 2020, 21, you know, music has gone from traditional gospel music to really just CCM. So you have where early 90s, you see big choirs and kind of diminished down to like groups in like the early 2000s. And then now you still have groups, but they're even smaller. And then you have a lot more solo artists. And so gospel music, where it was initially kind of big choir sound or you know arranged for bigger groups has really kind of diminished down to more so your solo artists and your smaller group do you feel like that takes away from the message of gospel music or do you think it enhances it if it's done tastefully it can enhance um in my in my years of doing this i've been in places where the music is just completely washing out the vocals and so it takes away from the performance but if it's tastefully accompanying the vocalist or the choir a lot of times it doesn't interfere, it really does add to the performance. My favorite thing about gospel choir, honestly, are my students. I mean, every day I get to come to class and I get to impart into students who are wanting more, who are wanting to desire to sing, who are wanting personal relationship with Christ. A lot of times students come here who don't even know who Christ is. And I think that's probably my favorite thing is over the course of four years, it allows me the opportunity just to introduce who Christ is, not to force it on them, not to make them a believer but just to simply introduce hey this is who Jesus Christ is and I leave it up to them to make that decision for themselves to accept him that's that that is the most joyous part because why live in a world that is already hell and then die and go to hell you know it's like I, I don't want to do that I want to live in a place and if I know I can make it into heaven and what I've read about heaven why would I not you know why would I not even take try to do that you know, and that's my favorite part about gospel. When I encounter those songs where it doesn't talk about the traditional, yes, God is a provider, God is able, God is good, he loves you. But it gets into the authenticity of, or the authentic part about being someone who's 22, black male, living in America, 
trying to walk the life of Christ. You know, there are going to be experiences in there that, of course, mine are going to be different from everyone else's. But I think that when you have those songs or that part of gospel music where you can truly relate to, and sometimes it can only just be like a small lyric in the entire song for you to know like, oh, this artist understands the struggle that I'm like, you know, enduring. <laughs> It's just a lot of fun. Honestly, it feels like, you know, I'm having like this huge party with God. And like being in gospel choir, you're around so many people who feel the same. And it's just, we're all of one accord. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a lot of fun to just, you know, not emotionalize the moment or, you know, feel like you have to act a certain way. You're free to do and worship however you feel. Exactly. Like however you please. And that's just, it's the freedom of it for me. I love it. I love how different it is. Um, a lot of times, people people know the difference between gospel and R&B, in my opinion, or gospel and rock, or gospel and hip-hop. Um, gospel just has its own unique sound. Um, in the Bible, it talks about how God wants a certain sound out of, out of his people. So, um, a lot of times he wants to hear the trumpets. He wants to hear brass. Like there's different things that God wants to hear that you won't get with a different genre. So I'm a strong believer in God wanting a certain sound out of his people. So, um, yeah, I believe that gospel music has this own uniqueness that can't be touched. You know, in classical, you know, it's more refined. And when you get to gospel choir, you know, it's just, it's just a different style of singing, you know. You're belting, you know, you're giving it your all. Not to say you're not giving it your all for classical, but um, it's just, you're just giving everything you got, your whole body, just to uplift the name of God. And it's just really special. And like she said, very liberating. Yeah. And it's just um, a type of freedom and feeling that in a, like another genre can imitate for me.